Hi Founder fans, Jason here. It's Friday night. Welcome to Trivia. I am very excited to be playing Trivia with you tonight, as I'm sure you're excited to be here with me. Thank you for coming. I want to give a big shout out to everyone who's coming, but especially uh, Lauren Marmot, who is now officially uh, one of the newest Patriots on Patreon. So thank you, Lauren, for helping support this channel and offset some of the expenses I incur while running Founder of the Day. And also to everyone else who supports me in any fashion, uh, thank you all so much. So let's get to it. Let's play some fun time uh, trivia. Um, I do want to note right off the bat, of course, I was like ready to go way early today. So I went downstairs and was, saw my family watching Night at the Museum. And then I went, oh no, it's a, I'm a minute late and I had to run upstairs. So I apologize for being a minute late today. I assure you I should have been on time. Uh, 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 mm -mm, Catherine took the time to spell my name correctly. Okay, thank you, Catherine. I did. I'm glad you noticed. Take a second to make sure I did spell it right because I have a tendency to misspell essentially everything. Uh, even using uh the error spelling correct and whatnot when i print my articles i still get people telling me things are spelled wrong pretty frequently so sorry about that hi misfit thank you for being here let's get right to it let's start playing some trivia uh let's get to these first early questions you'll notice i did not give away the answer this time as i am wont to do on the first question i uh, we're starting off a little bit easier today so let's get warmed up tell me who were the minutemen let's see uh the teacher I've had for four years doesn't take the test. Okay, well, well, I, I, unfortunately, excuse me, I'm just fixing my little back race here. Uh, we we build, uh, you build customs once you get in habits. It's very hard to old habits die hard, as they say. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. So I'm sure the teacher wrote it wrong once, and it's now going to be wrong forever. I apologize on your teacher's behalf, even though I feel no guilt <laughs> for being involved. Let's see, uh, Paul Revere with our first question i'm sorry first answer of the day volunteer soldiers from the colonies all right does anyone have any maybe a little more specific answers to that because that is not wrong they were certainly volunteer soldiers but what made them special what made the minutemen different than the other soldiers and i'm stalling for time here people roll in a little bit late so we're trying to give some people time to catch up uh, again thank you so much for uh, uh coming to hang out uh lauren with civilian militia ready to bear arms when called it is a little bit more specific i'll give you how i narrowed it down uh, i narrowed it down to psh, militia soldiers who were prepared to fight at a moment's notice so essentially what lauren said um uh, it is a little more specific and, and misfit i'm not you know trying to embarrass you your answer is not incorrect uh, but it was very important. Specifically, again, w with these cards, the answers are really long on the back. I know it's very hard for you to see, and I'm probably going to mess up my feed if it actually zooms in. There's a lot on here, so I have to sum it up. Uh, the militiamen were primarily in New England. They were around. Militia were everywhere, but the Minutemen were around in all the colonies, but they were a lot of them around Boston. And they weren't just regular militia soldiers. They were essentially flying camps that... As soon as the call came out, they would get up and go and form. They knew exactly what to do and when to do it as soon as they heard the uh, an alarm, as they called them, the Lexington alarm or the, um, you know, powder alarm. It was basically what Paul Revere was an alarm. So uh, yeah, I'm okay with being wrong. Well, thank you for your confidence, Misfit. I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, they were the ones that came out first. So Lexington and Concord was militia uh, Minutemen who were members of the militia, got called out, ran over right away to fight in that battle, and then the rest of the militia, who were not Minutemen, they were regular militia, most of whom were working on their farms, uh, when they got word of Lexington and Concord, they went and assembled in their town, and then they went to join the fight. So that's what makes Minutemen a little more special than any other militiamen. Uh, they're more special, that's not very nice of me to say, but that's what makes them stand out. Let's pop over to question number two here. Uh, oh, wait. Let's do what we're doing this first. I'll figure this out one day. Okay, next question. Who said the famous phrase, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Pretty famous saying in American history. I'll try not to lean over this whole time on the arm of my chair. I'll try and sit up straight like a gentleman. Who said, give me liberty or give me death? You know you know you've heard it, but who did you hear it from? Well, you probably heard it from me right now and uh, other people throughout time, but who originally gave it to us? Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum. I need, like, theme music. I don't want to steal the Jeopardy theme because I will definitely get sued. Uh, Catherine Livingston with 
Henry. I apologize, Catherine Livingstone. I, you know, I got the first name right. <laughs> I'm just used to saying Livingston because there are a lot of Livingstons involved with the American Revolution, especially living in New York as I do. Waiting to see if anyone else has a different answer or maybe a more confident one. But as we wait, I will give you the answer. The answer is Patrick Henry. Yes, Patrick Henry. Now, he said this uh, actually earlier on. Um, uh, uh, I believe, oh, that's the militia one. Um, uh, after the Stamp Act. Pa Patrick Henry was elected after the Stamp Act to the Virginia House of Burgesses, and he was pretty radical early on. In fact, when he gives this famous speech, he says, give me liberty or give me death. And there are other people in the room who say, treason, treason. And he actually has to rein things back in after he says it a little bit so as not to be accused of treason in the uh, weeks and months, uh, or I should say years, before the Declaration of Independence. Uh, he was very much one of the earliest promoters of things close to independence, maybe perhaps not independence per se, but Patrick Henry was on the cutting edge as far as rebels go. Um, and uh, as you know, became a very important founder uh, not just because of his great oratory, but because he was ready to lead in the field. He didn't see a lot of action during the war, but he was a militia leader and a commander uh, during the or at least the early days of the war. And later an anti-federalist, I always like to point out, as many important Virginians were. Now, I am going to put a halt to this because I am going to first pop back up over here. Say, that's a little warm-up. Thank you for warming up with me. And now we are going to pop over to Sporkle.com, which if you're new here, Sporkle is a trivia website, and we play a different one at this time every day. As you may have seen in the thumbnail, today we're going to discuss founding mothers. Well, kind of. So, the, uh, the, the, let's take a look. The actual one that I, uh, d decided to play, uh, it, it talks about founding fathers and mothers. The thing is, I have a feeling we'll get most of the founding fathers very quickly, but the founding mothers might take us a little bit. So let's see how many founding mothers we have. Everyone just jumping in. You're coming in just in time. We're going to play a little quiz. I'm going to hit play right now. And let's talk. So who was the wife of a president who wrote about life in the colonies? Let me let me know what you think. Let's see. Uh, Sporkle is our arch nemesis. No, Sporkle is our great friend. Sporkle is a challenge that helps us learn about the American Revolution in its own little way. So let me know, do you know, well, who do you think would be the wife of a president, narrows it down pretty quickly, uh, and who she wrote about life in the colonies? Let's see, Misfit saying Abigail Adams. I'm going to go with Adams, because we just need the last name, and Whammy. Not only is that right, but it also gives away the next one. Help write the Declaration of Independence, second president, John Adams. So let's move on. Who was a North Carolinian who helped boycott British goods. Now, I'll give you another hint. I I just so this is a founding mother they're asking about, and it just so happens that I wrote about her last week, <laughs> and we just talked about her yesterday. So maybe that's a pretty good hint. I certainly hope so. Uh, Lauren Marmot saying Martha Washington. Well. This one is not going to be Martha. She was not a North Carolinian. Though if you are reading ahead, which there's a good chance you are, uh, you might see the wife of the first president down here. And yeah, that is going to be a Washington over there. <laughs> um, and in fact, commander of the Continental Army, which I'm assuming we would have gotten anyway, also pops up when you type in the name Washington. So we're gonna, I'm going to keep going through. Now, we do have 10 minutes for this one, but, you know, let's see how we can get it. There is a housewife turned spy who discovered and revealed British plans. I wrote about her let's say like February or so, so not extremely long ago, but there was a housewife turned spy who discovered and revealed British plans. Uh, this one is going to be a gentleman, I believe, one of the leaders of the revolution who helped create the Constitution. It also has their life here, 1706 to 1790. 1706 to 1790, that's kind of a giveaway for this person. Oh, Catherine Livingstone with Barker, and yeah, it was Barker, Penelope Barker. Thank you for watching the videos and or reading the articles. <laughs> we learned something this week, whammy. Good job. Um, uh, oh, and I did I did skip one uh, woman who was wounded when taking the place of her husband at a cannon. What woman was wounded when she took the place of her husband at a cannon? It was at Fort Washington, and she would later go on to be one of the first, to be the very first woman granted a pension by the United States of America for her work in war. Uh, 
Let me know if you think of that name. Again, housewife turned spy, discovered plans. We have one of the leaders of the revolution who created a constitution. Also, 1706 to 1790, making him very old when the things were going down. Um, oh, and Catherine Livingston saying Mary Hayes, which I believe has an E after the Y, but we'll do it both ways. No, no. I will talk about Mary Hayes at the end because this person, Mary Hayes, is often called Molly Pitcher. But this woman also should be called Molly Pitcher, <laughs> um, and for various reasons. And we can, again, get into that a little bit later in the discussions. Um, we're looking for a founder who led the effort for the Constitution, the first Secretary of the Treasury. That should be kind of a giveaway. We have the author of the Declaration of Independence and the third president, also kind of an easy one. We're naming big sixes here, if you know what I mean. We have a 16-year-old woman. Who or girl at 16 who rode to warn patriots of British attack? Yes, Catherine. If it's not Hayes, it is Corbin. Oh, if the computer wants me to do it, Corbin. Mary Cochran Corbin. Absolutely. She's really an ad misfit coming through. You guys probably typed it at exactly the same time. I like how you're all on the same page here. I didn't check how far ahead of you I am. I'm only like, yeah, two and a half seconds. No big deal. Um,. There it is. Hey, Nick, 1776. Sybil Luddington is correct. And that is how you spell it. Good. I thought there were more Ds, but I am glad I followed your lead. Sybil Luddington is correct. Uh, also, we're looking for the first Secretary of the Treasury, third president, and fourth president. Um, those ones should be simpler, um, but I'm glad you're getting the difficult ones, to be honest with you. Uh, someone who helped draft the Constitution and was minister to France and England. I'm going to go, oh, yeah, no, okay. Uh, let's see. I do believe Jefferson is the third president. Um, leaning towards Burr, but I don't think she was a spy. Might be Prevost at the time. Prevost. No. Let's try Burr. No. I think I know who you're thinking of. Franklin is probably an answer. Yep. I think I know who you're thinking of. I'm not going to say it now, uh, but at the end I will say who I think you're thinking of. Uh, we also want to look for an author whose writings inspired the Founding Fathers. Very interesting. 1737 to 1804. I believe this is a woman also, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh, we're getting answers coming in strong. No. Let's see. Morris. That's a good guess. Oh, oh, it was Morris. That's not who I thought they were going for, but okay. Fair enough. Good play, Nick. Good play. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I, I I, think his name is pronounced Governor, but I pronounce it Gouverneur, which I know sounds the same, but Gouverneur is how it's spelled, but I think it's pronounced Governor. Uh, let's see, Lauren with Burke. Interesting. For uh, You know, that's a great guess for someone, I believe you're you're going for um, uh, a, so an author who inspired the Founding Fathers. That's a great guess. Blackburn, also interesting. I don't think, uh, uh, if I can spell it, Burn. Yeah, no. Um, Locke. See, I think they're referencing an American founder. I like where you guys are going with this. Uh, her first name is Lydia. That's right, Catherine. <laughs> and I don't know how to spell her last name. Um, I think they're looking for an American here. I'm actually not sure. I'm actually not. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I didn't play through it once just to see how many. You know that there were mostly founding mothers. Um. What about an English woman turned influential South Carolina plantation owner? This is also someone I have written about in the last two weeks. Just by chance. I had no idea. This is the first time I've ever seen this game. Let's see. Um, Dickinson, probably. Oh, yeah. I thought it might have been Dickinson, too. Uh, Hamilton is probably an answer. Yes, Treasury. Madison is one of the presidents. There we go. Get those out of the way. Don't want to miss the easy ones. Early U.S. Attorney General and Secretary of State. Okay, the first Attorney General. I told about him not entirely too long ago. He went to the Constitutional Convention. He presented the Virginia Plan, which was mostly written by James Madison, but it was called this person's last name because he presented it. And then at the end, he refused to sign the United States Constitution, even though he was in the room when it was signed. And at that same time, he was Governor of Virginia. There it is, Nick Randolph. Nailed it. Nailed it. I'm glad I'm adding more to it. <laughs> Make sure we get it. A Philadelphian 
who helped support, who helped raise money to support troops. This is a woman. And she started the Ladies Association of Philadelphia. And after which, Ladies Associations appeared all over the United States. Let's see, Jay, are you Sarah Livingston, Jay? It's a good guess. Uh, this, she was married to a, we call him governor, but president of Pennsylvania. There it is, Misfit Durag. I think, yes, Lydia Durag. We did it. We did it. That's teamwork right there. That's teamwork. Um, she, yes, was actually a British person who married an American and came over and then really supported the troops. She raised money and wanted to give, I think she wanted to give money to the soldiers, but Washington didn't want her to. Instead, they ended up sewing uh, sewing uniforms for the soldiers. And each woman, she instructed each woman to sew their own name into uh, an, a uniform that would go to a random soldier so that the soldier could look and see the name and remember that they were fighting for the people back home as well as themselves. Um, a really important person, but we'll, we'll come back to her. A man who rode through Boston announcing that the British were coming. The British were coming. I'm sure Misfit can get this one pretty easy. Uh, maker of the first American flag. This is actually not true. I know who they're referencing. We all know who they're referencing here. Who sewed the first American flag as the story goes? Though that story is probably not entirely true. Um, and a Boston writer who supported and wrote about freedom. This is a woman. Uh, related to an important family. Yes, they are definitely talking about Betsy Ross. Uh, not to ruin any, break any hearts, but she is not the... Yes, everyone. I'm glad everyone gets that. I'm sorry to break hearts. She probably did not sew the first American flag, but it's a fun story. American hero. Uh, you, okay, Locke definitely inspired the American founders. Um, I think they're talking about an American author who's inspired uh, Common Sense. The author of Common Sense. Does it help? Hopkinson, well, Hopkinson designed the American flag, that's for sure. Um, let's see. We're doing really good, though. I mean, I'm about to run out of time. Franklin, I think we got Franklin. Um, I think what they mean is, and I am out of time. I think they mean Thomas Paine. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Kath, you guys got it right when I said common sense. That was good. I should have given that hint earlier. I didn't think about it. Um uh, Misfit, you should have gotten Paul Revere. Uh, it might be behind me, but it's literally in your title. <laughs> um, Mercy Otis Warren was a really important, is it behind my head? Uh, a really important American founder. Um, her, her, she was a scribbler, as her husband called her. She was related to the Otis family and the Warren family. She married into it. Um, and she later becomes an anti-federalist. Um, Thomas Paine should have gotten Eliza Pinckney. We just talked about two weeks ago. I thought it was very funny that I wrote about Penelope Parker like three days ago. And Eliza Pinckney, like, 12 days ago. Uh, and they both uh, showed up here. Um, fair enough, Misfit. Fair enough. We, we did really good. Uh, Esther, I guess her middle name is Derped Reed. <laughs> Sorry to laugh if anyone's last name is Derped. Um, it's a South Park joke, kind of. Um, Esther Reed married Joseph Reed, who was president of Pennsylvania. He had a lot of conflicts with other people, but he was a soldier in the war, an officer in the war. Um, and she, she started the Ladies Association, who, as I said, uh, sewed uniforms for the soldiers. She raised a lot of money from women in the Americas of all statures of life to who donated what they could. Um, a really interesting character. I should probably uh, maybe write another article about her soon. So maybe we'll talk about her soon. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, we did great. Lydia Durag uh, was a housewife turned spy. Uh, uh, I believe she, I want to say Georgia, but it might have been South Carolina. I apologize for not remembering exactly what state. Margaret Cochran Corbin, uh, you know, we someone who mentioned Mary Ludwig Hayes, who did something similar and helped at the cannon when her husband was killed. Uh, Margaret Cochran Corbin was in essentially the same situation. Um, yeah, I, I uh, Betsy Ross uh, is it that first flag. Uh, um, I, I, I thought, part of me thought this was John Adams, but I forgot we already got John Adams. <laughs> um, and also, John Adams didn't draft the Constitution. He was in France, and or England, actually. Um, anyway, that was fun. I had fun. Did you have fun? Sure hope so. Back to me. Hi, guys. Back to trivia. Okay, <laughs> a nice little, nice little pause there. Bring trivia back up. I am going to pop up the next question. And let's rock. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Got to get rid of the old questions first. There it is. Whammy. So, where did most colonists live? On farms or in cities? Someone didn't like my transition and left. 
Um, again, we are playing from this trivia box game. That's where these cards come from. I have a variety of cards here. Um, this one is Life Before the War. There are going to be six questions from this card. The first three are students for, for younger people. They should be a lot easier. And then the next three are much harder. Uh, and they are obviously easy because everyone has gotten the answer right. I'm not going to elaborate too much. We're just going to move on. The answer was farms. Good job, team. Who? Words. I can say them. What were colonists who remained loyal to Britain called? Loyalists, patriots, or redcoats? I almost actually left the three answers out because it is a fairly simple question. Again, we're starting at the student level and we're working our way up for anyone signing in. Uh, just now, welcome. We are moving up to the more difficult questions. So pretty easy. Throw your answers in the bottom. Uh, I see Catherine already sent through an answer. Lauren's popped in an answer. Misfit, loyalists or Tories? I'm glad you added Tories because we just talked about that last week in trivia. Not a word I use a lot because Whigs and Tories, I always seem to get confused. But yeah, everyone's ramming through. Good job, team. Loyalists. Absolutely. Now let's move to a little bit of a harder question here. True or false? Most girls in colonial times did not go to school. Now, this question I don't like because it's a negative question. So, is it true they did not go to school or it's false they did go to school? You see how that, like, I almost altered the question when I was typing it in because I'm like, ah, uh, it's, it's a trick question kind of. Well, what do you guys think? Let me know. True or false? True, most girls did not go to school or false, most girls did go to school. So, we're getting... False. Most girls in colonial times. So when you guys are saying false, you're saying they did go to school. Okay. Everyone's saying, okay, Catherine, true, they did not go to school. You shouldn't be confident. It's a trickier question than it should be. I should have just changed it. The answer is, according to the card, true. Most girls in colonial times did not go to school. But to be fair, most boys didn't go to school either. So it's even more trickier than the than the double negative version of the question. Anyway, uh, most people were schooled at home, learned how to read. Mo there was high literacy rates in, in the colonies. Don't let that fool you. Very high literacy rates because you had to read the Bible or you were not going to heaven. You were going to another place. And therefore, uh, most people could read. And it was actually generally the mother's job to teach the children how to read. Mothers were heavily involved in education. But there were not a lot of schools. I mean, 100 years later, there still were not a lot of schools to go to. So that is a little tough one. But here we're going to move on to the even toughier ones. What was the largest colonial city before the war? Now, to clarify, they mean in British North America. <laughs> um, thanks, Mom. Yes, you're going to heck in a handbasket. Yeah, you better know that Bible, especially in New England. <laughs> you know. In certain mid-Atlantic colonies, it was... Uh, I shouldn't even say that, because Pennsylvania was New Quaker mostly, but heavily religious. Uh, let's see. Okay, we got some different answers coming through. What was the largest colonial city before the war? Catherine, really confident with the Cavs. Boston. Uh, Nick, Philadelphia. Uh, Lorne, spelling it wrong, and then changing his answer entirely. Misfit with more than one answer. Very interesting what's going on here. Are we are we are we satisfied with these answers? Because you guys, I'm at a, I knew this question would be fun because the answer is actually Philadelphia. Congratulations, Nick. Lauren should have gone with your gut, man. <laughs> it was Philadelphia. Philadelphia actually was the biggest, the second biggest city in the British Empire after an only London when the Revolutionary War broke out. So it was a Really large city at about, I think, 20,000 people, <laughs> which is about the size of the college town I attended. Uh, yeah, I went to Oneonta, New York, One SUNY Oneonta, <laughs> and that is a fairly small town of about 20,000 people. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that happened the one time you really went for it. At least you, at least you rained it down and took the caps back. <laughs> but yes, Philadelphia was the largest city before the war, although it was very quickly overta quickly overtaken by New York. Uh, no, ah, damn it. <laughs> I mean, sorry. Okay, I gave you the answer. I said foul language. I apologize. Uh, I'm mortified. Uh, George Washington would issue me 99 lashes. Okay, now that you know that. <laughs> before the war, 
Why did many women weave their own cloth? Oh, I guess the answer you saw wasn't right. <laughs> That's me thinking on my feet, going to a entirely different question. <laughs> Before the war, why did many women weave their own cloth instead of buying it from British merchants? Is the full question here. I abbreviated it a bit to fit it on the screen. No Walmart. Lauren, with an answer that is not wrong, <laughs> but certainly incorrect. <laughs> Uh, misfits saying cloth was expensive. I, I will note uh, they, uh, yeah, I, I believe they're specifically talking in the in the handful of years just before the war. Not all of the two hundred years of colonial uh, colonialism before that. I'm only seeing two answers. Wasn't it to destroy the British business stuff? That is a, an intense way to put it. Uh, I'm waiting to see. I don't see. Uh, wait, wait, wait. See if Nick's gonna pop an answer through. I mean, he got, oh, uh, Nick, oh, it was the fourth most populated city in the British Empire. You know what, Nick, you might be right about that. I should look that up. I was, I feel like I heard just recently I read somewhere that it was the second, but I might be wrong because it does seem like there should be like Manchester or Liverpool. I don't know a lot about English cities, but it feels like actually in Britain should be bigger, but I will look it up. I will let you know. Um, boycott. To protest against Britain. Yes. Okay. And everyone's come together. I like that about this group. We all come together on the same team. It's better than when we were fighting against each other. And yes, the answer is to boycott British matrix. Um, Cloth was expensive. That's not wrong. Uh, although, as we learned the other day from Eliza Pinckney, South Carolina and other states were colonies were exporting indigo to dye this fabric. So, you know, it offset. Uh, but yes, uh, yeah. Um, to boycott British made goods. Uh, the boycott was not, well, first of all, uh, initiated by the Continent, First Continental Congress, but simultaneously, it was done by who we were just talking about, uh, uh, Penelope Barker. Uh, also, those women said, we're going to boycott anyway. So it was to boycott British made goods, uh, and it was a great way to go about it, was to weave your own clothes. Uh, as I said in that discussion, you know, many of the wealthier women obviously had plantations with lots of slaves who did a lot of the weaving for them. But most women, just like they didn't go to school, like most men didn't go to school, most people didn't own slaves because you had to have some money to buy a human being. I'm not trying to make light of the situation. I am just trying to acknowledge most people didn't. So they made it themselves. And it was everyday women had a huge contribution to carrying out the war. Flogging your soldiers incredibly dumb? Well, they should have behaved themselves, shouldn't they? <laughs> uh, hashtag George Washington. <laughs> All right, next question. Several years before the war, five protesters in Boston were killed by British troops. What is that event known as? When five Boston protesters were killed by British troops. As I sip my water out of my hideously blue water bottle. I like the color of this water bottle in real life, but on camera, it doesn't work with the tones I'm setting in my picture. So I'm apologizing for blinding you. Look at my name. Uh, am I looking at Paul Revere or Misfit? Which part is it? <laughs> Boston Massacre. Yes, this is the question I gave the way answer way to before. It is a fairly easy one. It was five out of dozens of protesters. So it's a little bit of a tricky question. Um, the slaughter on King Street. Oh, how dare you keep your propaganda to yourself, Mr. Nick. <laughs> All right, so we've gotten through this card. We are now going to pop over to the uh, one of the What Happened Here cards. There's a little map. It's going to be really hard for you to see because I have lights on me. And if I zoom in too close, then it zooms in on the card and it ruins my picture for the rest of the thing. I've learned my lesson. But they're pointing at Boston, Massachusetts. You know where Boston is. What happened in Boston, Massachusetts, December 16th, 1773? Oh, I don't know. I know. Oh, I do know. And I'm done stalling. You guys say it. And you know, anyone who's watching and isn't commenting, I know there are a few of you out there. Thank you for watching. I'm really glad. I hope you're learning something. Uh, especially learning about how to not give away answers on a YouTube channel. Okay. Catherine. Screaming in my face. <laughs> oh, that's what John Adams called in his diary. Actually, you know, I knew I had heard the phrase slaughter on King Street. I couldn't remember if it was propaganda or where it came from. I guess if it was just in his diary, it's not propaganda. But I'm also guessing everyone else got the answer right. It's the Boston Tea Party. 
a little confusing having just talked about the Boston Massacre. I'm really messing with your heads. Uh, yeah, the Boston Tea Party, they dressed up as Native Americans and dumped the equivalent of millions of dollars worth of tea into the water and ruined millions of dollars. It's what made England so mad is like, I forget what the equivalent is today, actual, the actual equivalent number if you inflate it, but my understanding is it's like if you dumped a hundred million dollars worth of products off the ship. You could see how the government would be really upset at you for doing something like that. <laughs> Any hoozle, move on to our last card right here. We're having fun, but we're, we're cruising through, we're cruising through. Oh, I should get rid of the other questions. See, again, we're learning how to not run a website <laughs> or run a YouTube channel. Uh, I'm gonna, I see you, Miss Pitt. I'm gonna respond to whatever it is you're saying. First, I'm gonna ask the question. Uh, these are the Constitution cards. They don't necessarily reflect the American Revolution. As a reminder, they are just the Constitution in general. But I did buy them at the Pennsylvania State House uh, Museum in Philadelphia. So I bought them with the other cards. So I counted. Does the Constitution give the Supreme Court the right to declare acts of Congress unconstitutional? This is a fun question. Does the Supreme Does the Constitution give the Supreme Court the right to declare acts of Congress unconstitutional? Uh, Miss Pitt, what do we say? I was a nerd. And kind of a jerk. <laughs> Self-admitted jerk. You know, he was a pro, uh, an early prototype of what Americans would become. Very proud of being a jerk. Uh, Hot-headed nerd. Is it true they did it in broad daylight? Uh, the Boston Tea Party, no, it was at night. Yeah, it was at night. Um, and there were other things going on. Okay, we're getting some interesting answers here. The 12th Amendment made judicial review. <clears throat> so anyone joining in, we're just answering this question. Does the Constitution give the Supreme Court the right to declare acts of Congress unconstitutional? No, it does not. But kind of. Nowhere in the Constitution is this actually written. So the Constitution doesn't specifically grant this power. But as we're learning with the Anti-Federalists in both the Impartial Examiner that I published today that I'll talk about on Thursday uh, and the Letters of Brutus, we find out that one of the arguments against the Constitution was things were not specifically written and that a lot of it, the spirit of the, get in the camera, spirit of the Constitution was left up to the determination of the judges. At least that was an argument being made. Now, it's not specifically the 12th Amendment, Nick. Uh, I can see how you confuse that because the 12th Amendment was being ratified just as the case of Marbury versus Madison was being heard. And it was in the case of Marbury versus Madison that the Supreme Court decided it had the power of what's called judicial review or the ability to determine if what the legislature is doing is or is not constitutional. Judicial review was around. It already happened in a few states had determined that judges had the right that state Supreme Courts had the right to determine whether state legislatures were doing things that were good under the state constitutions, but it's not specifically written in the Constitution itself. And it wasn't until, as, as I heard one said, really well said, John Marshall in the Supreme Court gave itself the right of judicial review. So, and it was a, basically the same time as the 12th Amendment was getting passed, but the 12th Amendment is, is about uh, electing people so you didn't have the whole Burr, Jefferson, Vice President, and President Ty, you run on a ticket instead kind of thing going on. So, technically, the answer is no, but in practice, yeah, that's what happens. So, I hope I'm not being too confusing. I hope you don't feel like I tricked you. It is a tricky thing, but it's really good to know. I was really happy. I draw these cards at random out of the box, so I was really happy to see this one because, you know, it's a really um, telling situation. We can learn from it. Uh, let's see. You guys have been saying a lot while I was giving my little spiel there. Let's see what you said. Uh, yes, yes. So essentially everyone got it wrong <laughs> because it happens so frequently that we kind of assume it is in the Constitution. Uh, we're all failing U.S. history this week. Yeah, that's all right. Some of the questions are tough. I failed at asking the questions. I gave away the answers sometimes, so... Uh, do not jinx me. I have less than a month before I get my diploma. Uh, we need to retake civil... Catherine, what are you studying? Oh, as I drop cards. As I drop cards, and as we move on to the next round, the final round, the big bang, or the big shebang, as my father used to say. Anyone just coming in? You're coming in just in time, because we're about to name as many American founders as we can. I'm going to pop over here to trivia, uh, or to sporkle.com. I'm going to go over to our other platform here. Now, 
for those of you who are new here, I got to give the rundown. I know most of you play all the time, but there are some people who are probably new here. What we're about to do is name a many, as many American founders as we can. Now, these are specifically members of the legislative branch of the American founding. So unfortunately, there will be a lot of mil military men left out and many people who later work for the Washington administration who are left out. It's also not every member of the Continental Congress, but it's everyone who signed anything, as well as members of the first Congress, a.k.a. signers of the uh, Continental Association at the end of the uh, well, attendees of the first Continental Congress, signers of the Declaration of Independence, signers of the Articles of Confederation, attendees at the Constitutional Convention, most of whom signed the document, and then anyone who was an inaugural 1789 member of the U.S. House of Representatives or Continental Congress. It's a lot of names. I'm going to scroll down just a bit because we, oh, this is actually our score from last week. Somehow stayed up on my computer. It usually goes away. Last week, we named 237 out of 243. Our record is 241 out of 243. Can we do it? There's a bunch of us playing right now. Can we do it? Let's see. Catherine. Oh, your high school diploma. Oh, okay, great. Well, you'll do fine. Congratulations. Welcome to the real world. <laughs> It's kind of, it's fun enough being a grown up. Um, it's fine. Oh, oh, don't look. I realized there were some names there. I was giving them away. I was so proud of our 98% last week. So if you are ready, I'm going to hover up here. I'll scroll down in just a second. I'm going to take a sip of water. Remember, one name at a time. And for anyone who's not played before, it's better to name a founder, it, it, better to name someone twice than not at all. So even if you think someone already said a name, or if you think you said it and I missed it, say it again. It's fine. Let me take a sip of water. Wait. Because I'm about to break my fingers typing for the next 15, 20 minutes. We have 20 minutes to do this. So, I'm, oh, you know what? I'll just hit refresh because I got to refresh it anyway. Okay, let it refresh. Here we go. I'm ready. I'm ready. I was so proud of our score last week. I left it up. Okay. So, once you guys start saying names one name at a time, when you start saying names, I'm going to hit play because I'm about two and a half seconds ahead of you. So to give us a fair shot of the full 20 minutes, go. I suggest starting with the big six. And the big six, if you're not familiar, are what I call the most important founders, what everyone calls the the founding fathers. I'm here waiting for you. Whammy. There's Misfit. Bland, huh? Bland. Coles. Franklin. Yeah, let's not, let's not skip the big easy names. I know we want to get to the tough fun names, but... We don't want to end up with, you know, Benjamin Franklin is the only name we miss. <laughs> How terrible would that be? Randolph. Peyton Randolph. We only just need the last names because I only type last names because sometimes that's more than one. Like Adams was three people just right there. But thank you for your thoroughness. Sherman. Roger Sherman. Sinickson. Washington. Lee. Adams. Do we just do? That's okay. Same twice. Jefferson. I think we just did. Hamilton. I'm going to do Jefferson again just to make sure because I'm confident. Adams just did. Payne. Page. White. Brown. Yes. Van Dyke. Thank you for the van. That would have thrown us off. I guess I'm ready. Oh. Hopkinson. Oh. So I did. Okay. So I typed in Hopkins and that was the right name. So it popped up. So we'll do the Hopkinson. Parker. Livingston. J. Muhlenberg. Hansen. Good one. President of the Congress. Excuse me. Dickinson, don't want to forget him. Harrison, Floyd, Henry. Okay, let's take your time. That's all right. That's all right. Sylvester, good one. Wadsworth, we're getting to the worths. Uh, Williams, oh, Wads, okay, there's an S. Williams, oh, okay. Wentworth, Benson, Morris. Uger, Inger, Saul, Braxton, signer of the Declaration, Drayton, Ward, Patterson, attended the Constitution. Oh, I think Patterson is one T. Patterson, well played. Dayton, there we go, Misfit. Yes, you don't, yes, you want to bunch those guys together. Hawthorne, with an E? Nope, nope, is there no Hawthorne? Hawthorne, did I spell it wrong? Athorn? Oh, there's no W. Got it. Uh, Collins. I'm nice enough to give it away. Misspellings. I misspell things all the time. Gwinnett. Good old button. Pendleton. Is 
at least one, if not two. Uh, Leonard, man, I can't spell today. Is there a good thing you guys are spelling for me? Living Stun. Living Stun. Do we already do Living Stun? Living Stone? No, Catherine. I mean, you didn't say that, but still. Let's do Gary. Nelson. If Livingston comes up, and as we didn't do it, I'm counting it because I tried to spell it a bunch of times. John Stun. John Sun. Livingston. Try it again. I really want it. Packa. Henry. Oh, did we ever do Henry? We must have. Oh, yep. Stone. Man, I forget so quickly. Wilson. Walcott. Don't you know it's insane? Gray. Oh, Gray. No, there is a very similar name to Gray with just more at the end. That's a hint. White, black, Grayson. There it is. Uh, Griffin, Brown. Oh, oh, we did Brown. I think we did Brown. We did white and brown earlier. Williams, Williams. We've done, but there's if you put a little something at the end of Williams with Walker, Climber, Chase, Dehart. Okay, Dehart. Cling on, but what happens if you get rid of the de? Paul, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna type it in unless someone says says it. Wellsworth, Smith, Morton, Hudson, Reed, who was the uh, husband of uh, Etcher Reed, who started the Ladies Association, tying it together. Dean, Ames, Rhodes, we need Rhodes with an A. Okay, Rhodes, uh, Sumter. Elmer, Hart, there it is, Bannister, Harvey, Hart, okay, just got it, Alsop, Aesop, I think, John Aesop, I didn't actually write that, article. oh man, I did so much research on that guy, and I finally found it, and I forgot to write the article, because it took me, usually I only do research for one night per article, and it took me several days, Witherspoon, Mason, Jay, look forward to Alsop, in the Aesop in the future, Jay, do we do Jay, we must have done Jay, Holton, Galloway, Loyalist, Mason, um, Forum, with an O at the beginning. Good job. Good one, Lauren. Thatcher, there it is. I always think it's going to be wrong. Every week you guys say it, and I think it's going to be wrong, and it works. Uh, Lorenz, if I spell it right. Monroe, absolutely. Bassett, Lawrence, Harrison. Oh, we did Harrison. Bartlett. Pendleton. Pendleton. Did we do it? Oh, yeah, we did it. It's right in front of me. Got it. Winnett. I think we did. That's all right. Love that. Love that button. Biddle. Don't forget the Biddles. Henry. Oh, did Henry. Dayton. We did Dayton. Yes, sir. Payne. Better to say twice than not at all. It's fine. Carol. That's at least two. Sherman. I think we did. That's fine. Mifflin. Blount. A room. Do we do room? Nope. Not yet. Anyone pop it in? We are just naming any member of the legislative branch of the American founding that we possibly can think of. So if you can think of any names, say it. Humphreys, better to say it twice than not at all. So even if you think we did it already, say it anyway. Clark, like Clark, I think we did. Yes, we did. Fitzgerald. No, there is a Fitz that signed the Constitution, and it's not Gerald. Hancock, King, Otis. All right, we're rocking through. We're like halfway done already. Lewis, absolutely. That should be at least two. Maybe not. Maybe not. Because maybe not. Should be, but maybe not. <laughs> Williams, done. There it is, Lauren. I someone finally got it. Wilton, did Wilson strong? Did we do? Nope. Pink me. Now this. I've mispronounced... Hi, Angela. Thank you so much for showing up. I've mispronounced pink, pink knee for most of my life. Yes, Nick, it is Fitz... Fitz Simmons. Please don't feel bad, uh, Angela. This is... We are here to learn. One M in Fitzsimmons, though. Uh, Johnson, I think we did. Please don't feel bad. Keep the names coming. Uh, pink knee is correct. Uh, it just has an N in it. It's pink, as in the color, with knees. <laughs> Ames... Uh, Dwayne, you. Very interesting. 
Yeah, the Pinkney brothers are amazing. Like, we were just talking about, uh, I don't know if you were here, uh, Angela, but we were just talking about the Pinkney brothers' mom, who was very important to bringing indigo to South Carolina, making it the most important cash crop. Just did few, didn't do Dyer. Van Ren... Rensselaer. Yes, there's an N in there. I'm <laughs> doer. Really tough name. Boudinno. Look for Elias Boudinno as tomorrow's founder if you are a reader. Uh, of the articles, Climber, or I'll be talking about it on Thursdays when I wrap up the articles I discuss. Smith, McKean, Walton, Jay, Cat coming in every episode. Cat has to walk in. Cad Walleter, welcome. Oh, it's Boston. Okay, Ken. Ken, good. Rutledge, good night, big bud. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. Rutledge, we got. Taka, we got. They're hard. Good night, Maury. All right. Tell me to say good night. <laughs> Dean. Uh, Dean, we did. Yates, I don't think we did. Yates. So Yates walked out of the Constitutional Convention and went and wrote the Anti-Federalist paper, Brutus. Uh, who did he walk out with? It was another one of his pupils had grown up and went to the Constitutional Convention. Yates walked out. Robert Yates walked out with someone else. Masterson. No, I don't know that name. Nope. Interesting guess. Nelson. Got Nelson. We're 144. All right. All right. It's all right. Take your time. Pierce. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are missing. I've noticed we're missing uh, uh, Matt and Ashley, who have been major contributors in the past to getting names. That's all right. We'll do without. Born. Good job. So let's see. We are doing pretty good. Looks like we're slowing down. Oh, we're not slowing down. Okay. Cooper. Wholesome with an M. White. Okay. Giles. More. More. Okay. And we have, oh, pretty much got in. Oh, we need one person from the Constitutional Convention from Virginia. Giles. Oh, man. All the, okay. Well played, guys. Uh, we need a declaration signer from, oh, McClurg. There it is. And we have Virginia. Well played, team. Now, Pennsylvania, we're missing a whole bunch of people. Um, I will say, it looks like we haven't gotten the secretary, who technically shouldn't be here because he was a hired hand and not elected, um, but the secretary of all the Continental Congresses, Dayton. Uh, we got Dayton. And McClurg, we just did. So we're looking for that secretary there. Uh, we're also looking for several Pennsylvania signers of the Declaration, at least three signers from Pennsylvania. Ross. Okay, Ross is better. Rod. Uh, there's a very famous physician whose name we have not typed in who signed the Declaration of Independence. Mifflin, I think we got. We got Mifflin. We got Clymer. We got Franklin. We got Morris. We got Smith. We got Wilson. We got Ross. We got Morton uh, for the Declaration of from Pennsylvania. Bassett? Did we get Bassett? I thought we did. Yeah, we must have. That's okay. Better to say twice. Uh, Clymer. Nope, got George Clymer right there. Really important guy. Rush, there it is. There's the doctor I was referencing. Absolutely. Uh, now let's see. Uh, uh, okay, here, here comes the flood. Taylor, absolutely. Thompson is that uh, secretary I was talking about. Matt Clay. Uh, Ingersoll. I think we got Ingersoll, actually. That's a great name. Great guess. Um, I don't know if we got the other secretary who shares the last name with the seventh president of the United States, Andrew Robert Doe. Good one, if I can spell it. Pinkney, we got. Uh, I think I scared away uh, that that very nice person, Angela Abbott, who came on and said one name. And I just said, oh, you know, it's a little misspelled. But, oh, Angela, you're still here. You said Rush. Oh, never mind. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I thought you ran away. Uh, Rutledge Heister. Jackson, there it is. Uh, Cushing, good one. Uh, with, I think we got Wink, who we did not get. That's a great name. <laughs> love it. Uh, love it. King, I think we got King. Okay, let's see. How's Pennsylvania coming? We got a lot of Pennsylvania. We are missing a congressman in the first, two congressmen in the first congress from Pennsylvania. That's tough. Martin, nope, got it. Okay, missing a bunch of New York. Some Continental Congress delegates from New York. 
Uh, first got my powers. Let's see. Okay, names come in. Sedgwick. Really important. Helped Massachusetts realize it had already eliminated slavery on accident. Dalton. Good one. I usually do Dalton with Drayton and Dayton. Who we've already got. Holton. Okay, there are ones that are just like Holton. I don't know if we did them or not. Uh, St. Clair. I was just listening about uh, American Revolution podcast today about his, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, court Marshal. Kent. No, interesting guess. Lansing. There's the one hanging out with Yates. Don't need the junior, but well played. Add that in there. Good Hugh. Leonard. I think we got Leonard early today. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Dana. Francis Dana. He went and tried to meet with Catherine the Great, who was alive at the time, and didn't want any part of the war with Great Britain. Because <laughs> uh, Russia was not then what it is today. Thornton. We must have already done. Grout. Who created the first telegraph, but not with electricity. They would hold up basically flags on big poles. Partridge. Good one. Low. No, low. Yep, that's how it's spelled. Good job. He corrected it before I did. I'm gonna take a sip of my water real quick. Herring. Okay, good one. Forum. Oh. A Wisner. Misfit. Okay. <laughs> I was just about to give you the hint on that one. Yes, Henry Wisner, who's Nephew, we talked about, I think, was it this week or last week, about his uh, cowardice. Whipple. Oh, don't want to forget the Whipple family. Really interesting. William Whipple uh, owned a slave, Prince Whipple, who he would later free. And Prince Whipple played a really interesting role in early New Hampshire history. Skyler. Oh, man. The second highest ranking uh, officer, well, technically third highest ranking officer in the Army when the Continental Army was created. Giles, we got. Hopkins we got, and I think Hopkins' son we got too. Yeah, fair estimation. Hamilton. Oh, man, that's one you don't want to miss. Scott, well played. Middleton is at least two. I don't know if we got the one. It's uh, oh, a president of the... Okay, uh, president of the Confederation Congress, a constitutional convention delegate who was chairman of the Committee of the Whole during the Continental Congress, a uh, constitutional convention. He oversaw about most of the debates during the Constitutional Convention, not George Washington. Walcott, which I can uh, go into deep with later. Sedgwick, we just did. All right, let's do Benson. Got it. Huntington. Uh, Catherine. Gorham. That is who I was referencing, except you spelled it right. Gorham. Nathaniel Gorham, a hugely important founder. Born. Hawthorne. We did. Yeah, I think we got it. It took me a while to spell, but we did get Hawthorne. Benson, we just did. Thomas, nope. Thompson, Thompson, uh, Thompson. Okay, no, yeah, there's no P, and we got it already, but well played. <laughs> Butler, Hayward, Thomas Hayward, Jr., and Sr., both Thomas Haywards. All right, we got Frank, we got New York. Okay, let's go to South Carolina and New Jersey. Uh, Hudson, we got. There are ones that sound like that that I don't know if we got. Um, Walker? No, interesting. Matthews? Yes. Uh, South Carolina, we got a Constitutional Convention delegate and First Continental Congress. Lynch. Two Thomas Lynches. Absolutely. Well played. A lot of, uh, a lot of families from South Carolina. Nelson, I think we've got. Hall. We got. <laughs> um, Okay, very good team, though. Uh, oh, Hugh. Oh, come on. Huger. We did get, I think we got Sumter, too. That's all right. Gadsden. Did we get? No. Good one. Izzard, I think we did get. Stockton. That's a signer. Right there. Whammy. Tucker. Got it. That's another one that every time I type in, I'm like, no, that's wrong. And then whammy, there it is. <laughs> uh, Crane. Good one, guys. Good. Um... Uh, oh, there's one that sounds like uh, the actor from movies. And Smith, I think we got. Uh, Scudder, we did not get. Uh, Kinsey. Smythe. Nope. John Smythe. Scudder. I, I think I just typed that one. <laughs> Butler. Good, good. Oh, Butler. I thought we got that one. Awesome. Uh, Breerly. Nice. Um, Constitutional Convention delegate from New Jersey who left. Didn't like what was going on. I thought we already typed in his name. No. Um, 
Uh, okay, I'm getting. I want to give you a hint, but you guys are going too fast. Bart, let we we did great answer. It is correct. We already did it. And again, better to say it twice than not at all. Burke, awesome. There goes South Carolina. Chase, um, for New Jersey here. Uh, I'm not sure who they represent. The first Continental Congress delegate, but uh, the constitute our congressman, the first Congress, uh, constitutional convention delegate. There was a famous preacher in the 1500s who started a religion who or, or a denomination of Christianity that features his last name. I'm trying very hard not to give it away. His name also sounds like a civil rights preacher uh, whose initials are MLK. So find one of those names and tell them to me. Uh, Johnson, I think we got. Uh, Goldsboro, just talked about Robert Goldsboro yesterday. Glad we didn't miss that one. Sherman. For anyone joining us, if this is your first time, I, you know, there's some names here I haven't seen before. Uh, you know, I do, I publish articles. Uh, there it is, Luther. Okay, that's the guy's first name. Keep trying. Martin, there it is. Oh, did we already get Martin? No, Luther Martin. Luther Martin is who I was hinting at. Is he not from New Jersey? He might be from Delaware. Okay, sorry guys, terrible hint. Tillman is a correct answer. Uh, yeah, but as I was saying, anyone who uh, doesn't know who I am is new here. Conti, Sini, uh, Pierce. I um, publish articles seven days a week on my website, founderoftheday.com. And I also put out videos five days a week right here on YouTube about the American Revolution. So definitely subscribe or check out founderoftheday.com. Links in the description, yada, yada, all that good stuff. Carol, okay. Is it Luther Martin? Mercer. Yes, we did not do Mercer yet. Is Luther Martin? Oh, he was from Maryland. Oh, he was from Maryland. I wasted all your time with that great hint. I'm so sorry. Uh, Mick Henry. James Mick Henry, a very important surgeon who ends up being part of the Washington and Adams cabinets. Hughes, another uh, signer. I believe Jackson. Did we get that one yet? Yeah, we did. Okay, good. Jennifer. Daniel of St. Thomas Jennifer. His middle name was of St. Thomas, and his family was not from St. Thomas. That is just the name they gave. Wilson. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. All right, I uh, got most of Connecticut. Oh, wow. Oh, time's running out. Whoa. Okay. I got surprised by that. <laughs> All right. Ellsworth, I think we got. Oh, man. 20 minutes flew by so quick. Well, there it is. Um... It's certainly not our worst outing, but also not our best. We fell well short, considering last week we missed by five, and four weeks ago we missed by two. But that's okay. We got all of Virginia and all of Pennsylvania. Well, most of Pennsylvania. We missed Thomas Hartley, who might be behind my head. Uh, kind of a nobody, who was in the First, con first Congress. Um, we've got all of Massachusetts and all of New York. And these are extremely important states. It's really great we did. Same with South Carolina. We got all of it. New Jersey, we missed we missed Houston, which means I think somewhere else we're going to miss Houston. Yale, we missed. Hosmer, an article signer. Sturgis, ooh, like the motorcycles. I forgot about that hint. Trumbull is the son of the governor of Rhode Island. North Carolina, we did not do good, although someone just said Caswell. <laughs> uh, Cornelius Hartnett, not Josh. Jo is it Josh Hartnett? Yeah, that was the hint I started and forgot to finish. Uh, Richard Dow Spate dies in a duel. Hawkins, really important in negotiating with Native Americans. John Batista Ash, his family was important in the war. Timothy Bloodworth, uh, an outspoken anti-federalist. Um, John Steele, John Sevier, who was important on the frontier. Vining, Gunning, Bedford. Oh, Caesar Rodney. Oh, guys. You know what? We all have off days. New Hampshire. We didn't even go to New Hampshire. <laughs> John Sullivan. Thor we did try and type Thornton. And I noticed it didn't work, and I tried it twice. So Thornton, I'm going to give us credit for. Uh, Gilman, Langdon, names we should have gotten, probably. Foster is right a few times. Marchant is right a few times. William Ellery is a declaration signer. You know what? We all have our off days, and that's going to be okay. I still had a lot of fun. I'm going to pop me back up. I had a tremendous amount of fun. I'm so glad you guys came and took the time to hang out. Uh, I hope we learned a lot. I think a lot of the actual card questions were kind of informative. Uh, let me know in the comments if you did learn anything or if you're just really disheartened that we, we've done, we, we did significantly worse than we've done in the past. That's okay. Anyone showing up, it's not your fault. <laughs> uh, please definitely subscribe. Uh, if you want to hit like on your way out, that would be great too. 
um, as we get going, I did want to present one thing to you guys. So uh, as you probably know, I've been doing a lot of interviews with authors and people who create content about the American Revolution recently. And uh, I try and keep them under 20 minutes because I know you guys like the, the shorter stuff. I just recently did two fairly long interviews. Uh, actually, one of them uh, I had mentioned last week was with um, Ryan Cole, who wrote a book on uh, Henry Lighthorse, Harry Lee. And the discussion was so fascinating that it ended up being about 50 minutes long. And I'm having trouble deciding if I should cut that up into three 20-minute interviews or if I should just release it as an hour-long interview. Um, let me know. Thank you, Lauren. I really love the interviews, too. And that's why they end up being long is because I'm – like, I have a pretty good – at this point, knowledge of the American Revolution. But, you know, when I talk to an author who wrote a book, I'm doing such a deep, they've done such a deep dive on one particular obscure, fairly obscure founder that, like, I want to pull out all the information I can. And that's what happened talking with uh, Ryan Coles, because he just knows so much about uh, Henry Lighthorse Harry Lee, who was the father of uh, uh, Robert E. Lee. And his story is tragic and, and fascinating, and he's a war hero. Um, so, uh, so I'm just, uh, you know, I, I, I literally looked down and was like, I was supposed to stop you talking half an hour ago, but it's just such, so good content. Um, I see people liking the interviews. Um, uh, uh, release it all together. You can pause and come back. Okay. I, you know, I like some of the podcasts I like, I do the same thing. I'll listen to them when I'm doing the dishes and come back later. Um, uh, Okay. Because I was, I was just curious. So I thank you for your honest opinion. I might still put this uh, out to certain other outlets, uh, you know, Patreon, on, on Twitter, uh, maybe Facebook. I'm not as good on Facebook as I should be, or at least used to be. Um, but uh, you guys seem to just want it. Fine, great, I will. It's a lot easier for me to just <laughs> upload it than to cut it up into parts and upload it three times. I mean, it's not that much easier. It's like 10 minutes of my time, but still. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, Misfit, I will get to you on John Paul Jones. Actually, you know what? I had asked Michael Troy about that. I, I also spoke to him again this week. We talked about one of the British generals. Uh, I think this time we talked about, um, it was yesterday and I can't remember. <laughs> we talked about, uh, General Howe. Because I know I usually focus on the American founders, but it is important to learn about the, uh, British side of things too. So we are doing that series. So that one ran a little bit long too. That one's almost 40 minutes also, but... Uh, really entertaining. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. And I, I should have asked Michael because he's the my Navy resource. He knows a lot about the naval side of the war compared to me. I, I don't have, of all the things, I don't have a thorough background. It, it is the naval side of the war. I've been trying to learn for you guys. Uh, <laughs> did General Howe have a brother? Yes, General Howe's brother uh, was admirable. Admirable. The admirable admiral. Uh, 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 William Howe was the general and Admiral Howe had a first name that eludes me. Uh, he was essentially in charge of the British waters in North America. And we do talk about him a little bit in the interview with Michael Troy. So, uh, if, if you guys seem to want me to release more one, so I'll release the Henry one on, um, the Henry Lee one on Monday and then probably Tuesday I'll release the, uh, General Howe one. Um, Interview Chris the Redcoat um, or Brandon the Redcoat. You know what? Is he the guy? He like does something similar to what I do. I think I, I I think I have seen several of his videos. If it's the guy, I forget his handle, but I think I know who you're talking about, and I have considered reaching out to him. Um, I'm a little bit nervous to reach out to some of the bigger names. I'll be honest with you. There are certain authors that I would really die to talk to. Um, I'm still, I'm kind of getting the hang of the channel first and, you know, not obviously as you've learned tonight watching me do this, I haven't quite really figured out how to professionally put out these YouTube videos. I'm really trying every video. I try to improve as much as I can. And sometimes they get significantly worse one day after another, because what I try doesn't work and I don't want to not put the content out. I, as long as you can hear what I'm saying, which itself has been a problem before, <laughs> then, you know, you're getting, you know, even if I don't look great, um, you can still hear what we're talking about. So. Um, uh, I am trying and I want to get it as good as I can before I start reaching out. I I'm also hoping to grow the channel a little bit more, you know, cause if I'm getting someone who has a little bit of weight to what they do to come over here, you know, I want people to watch what they have to say. Um, so, 
I'm kind of proving myself with certain friends I've made in the industry uh, along the way first. Um, William Howe had at least two brothers. One was Admiral Howe. Uh, and we do talk about that a little bit because eventually William Howe becomes Lord Viscount Howe because one of his older brothers passes away. Um, Richard Howe. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, Admiral Richard Howe. General William Howe. I think. <laughs> siblings. Siblings make me confused. Uh, one died in the Seven Years' War. Oh, yeah. So I think there were actually a bunch of brothers. There was the older one who, again, eventually passes away. Uh, there was William. There's the one who passed the Seven Years' War. There was the Admiral. It was it was a pretty big family um, uh, from the British perspective. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe I will reach out to him. Well, I'm nervous to put myself out there. I know I'm supposed to, as a content creator, reach out to other people in the industry doing similar things. I was just, you know, bashful about it, man. <laughs> As self-serving as putting myself on camera might be, <laughs> um, uh, Richard was Richard was the admiral, right? Okay. George was involved in the Seven Years' War. Okay, okay. Catherine, I know four: George Howe, Thomas Howe, William Howe, Richard Howe. Very interesting. You know a lot of Howes. We believe in you, Lord. Thank you so much. I know you do, and I want to give you another shout out. Thank you so much. Uh, for, for jumping in on Patreon. Uh, a bunch of people have jumped in to support the channel on Patreon, which you can do from the link below. Some people do one-time donations on PayPal, which I don't have a link below. I just got to put that in. Um, and, and several people have, have contributed money to Founder of the Day recently, which I really appreciate because this is a very small channel. I've essentially been bleeding money for the last three and a half years. And I'm getting now because of people's generosity uh, in supporting the channel, I'm like inching my way up to zero. <laughs> so I can just at least break even with founder of the day. Uh, and, and I really am humbled uh, that anyone would contribute like that and that you guys take the time to watch and hit like. And I know it sounds stupid, but uh, if you guys hit like, it is huge for YouTube to appreciate what I'm doing and send it out to more people. Um, and, and just simply watching the time you watch, YouTube recognizes and adds this to more people. So thank you so much. Um, I, uh, I know my content is not particularly for everyone. Like I'm just, I bounce around a lot from founder to founder and you guys like it and that's great. Um, and there are other, um, there are a lot of people who pop in while we're talking here and never come back. Uh, cause it's just one take videos. I'm, I'm, I do a lot of work researching these articles. Like I'm publishing an article seven days a week. Um, some of them, especially over the weekends are recycled from the past, but I'm writing five articles a week. <laughs> it's a lot of research and, and the time I take to do that um, takes away from my time I can actually put into learning how to edit videos professionally. I finally figured out the sound, I think. <laughs> I still don't like the way I look because I can't figure out where to put my lights. Yada, yada, yada. Don't let me complain. I'm not here to complain. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm not even making excuses. I'm just, you know, you guys are hanging out play trivia i'm just being honest with you guys because you take the time to watch so i feel like you should know um oh misfit introduced you very cool whoa i didn't okay well i didn't know we had real life friends hanging out on the other side of the the screen there uh awesome thank you misfit this is then that's what i mean it's hitting like it's telling your friends this is is that's exactly the type of support that you know makes it worthwhile you know that and the fact that i'm starting to talk to real legitimate authors about their work is uh you know very humbling to me Thank you so much. Uh, I am not going to take up your whole night. I have to go publish an article to go out tomorrow. Um, although, like I said, it's already written and ready. I just got to kind of set up my email. But Tomorrow's Elias Boudinot, who's got a fascinating life and was a president of the Continental Congress. So I hope you look forward to that. I truly appreciate you guys coming and playing along with trivia and commenting. Again, thank you a thousand times uh, for all the support you give in all your varying capacities. Good night, Misfit, everyone else, and peace be with you. I'll hit the right button. See, I'm not. I will figure out how to run the channel. <laughs> peace field.